Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Steve Down. This is my guitar. If you're just joining us, this is the third episode in a study on Mule by Kenny Burrell, taken from his album from 1963, I believe, Midnight Blue. And I've done quite a few um, Kenny Burrell tracks on this YouTube channel. Um, and I've already done Chitlins um, and Midnight Blue. So go and check out those if you really like this particular album. But today we're looking at Mule and we are into the second chorus of his guitar solo. Um, so this is the third lesson on this. And today gets really interesting with some of his chord changes and some of his approaches. Um, so we do dive deep today. So um, let's get ready for that. Before we get into it, I just want to say a big thanks to my patrons. Um, I know that there's going to be lots of you who will have signed up, but I've actually recorded this episode on the same day that I recorded the second episode because I'm going on tour with Joss Stone. And so I'm trying to pack in as much content for you guys as possible. So um, I know there will be people who have signed up. So thanks very much. Um, to all of those who have, but obviously I can't read your names out. So um, a big thanks to all of my patrons. If you want to sign up to Patreon, the link is here and there you can get the backing track, the transcriptions um, for any of the series that you see on this channel. Um, and obviously you'll get all of the exercises, examples, chord scales, arpeggio packs and everything there as well. And some extras there too. There's some extra transcriptions every now and again on there too. If you want to um, say thanks for the lesson, um, but you don't want to do a subscription, there's a buy me a coffee link below. Um, and as always, hit the like and the subscribe button and drop a comment below if you've got something to say. OK, let's crack on with uh, the first four bars of this chorus. Remember, we're in a blues in the key of C. And today we see more than just the normal one, four and five chords that you would get in a standard 12 bar blues. So let's see the first four bars. Okay, so straight off, we see Kenny using some chord grabs. Now what he's doing here is um, he's going from a minor seven to a, a dominant seven. Okay, mixing that minor and major thing there as usual. Um, and then after that, we've got a really big run down the minor pentatonic scale, which is something that Kenny's actually quite famous for. He does it in Chitlins. He does it in Midnight Blue as well. Um, and this one's quite fast. There's some demi semi quavers in there. Um, OK, so get ready with your alternate picking in the right hand and make sure that you're practicing it slowly with a click first in order to be able to make it nice and accurate. The thing that makes it even more difficult is off the back of that, he hits an F9 chord. So... OK, so it's quite packed, even though the tempo of the piece is actually quite slow. What he's doing um, is packing an awful lot into a small area. So make sure you practice it slow to begin with and then gradually speed it up. The thing to unpack here is the fact that he is using these chord grabs. So it's a good idea to know um, some chord voicings of the C7 and the F7 or F9. Um, and I've provided that for you here. So here are some chord voicings for a C7 all around this kind of area. It's not exhaustive by any stretch of the imagination, but just some around this area that you might want to use. And then also some for F9 and adding in some extra notes as well. And you can see for here, Kenny's generally using them on beat one of the bar. So I would encourage you to do the same if you're just starting out using chord grabs. They do provide um, some really rich sophistication in your soloing if you do do that, especially if you haven't got a harmony instrument like Kenny hasn't here. 
Okay, so the next two bars get really interesting. So whereas before his vocabulary has been minor pentatonic or major pentatonic or blues scale, here he's starting to use some more chromaticism. So this line that he plays. Okay, there in bar 27 is basically a minor pentatonic scale from my um, imagination anyway, um, from my point of view anyway, it's a minor pentatonic scale with some extra chromatic notes added in. So it's the standard but he's added in that note, that note, that note, and that note, and that note there. So he's adding in some chromatic notes in there, as well as some diatonic notes as well from the natural minor scale. But all that to say is that Kenny's using chromaticism, he's using notes that aren't included in that standard minor pentatonic scale to create some tension. So here are some more options. I've added in a couple of extra notes for things that you can add in to the minor pentatonic scale in order to create that tension. And then here's an example of me doing that. The other thing you'll see in that example is something that Kenny does in bar 28, which is where he brings in some chords that actually aren't even supported with the bass underneath. So he brings in a B flat major seven arpeggio underneath it. Now, the reason for him doing this is to synthesize the extra extensions that are available to you um, from the key of C. So what he's done here with adding in a B flat major seven arpeggio is the B flat obviously is a th flat seven, so that's nice. The D is the ninth, and then the F is the 11th, and the A is the 13th. So what Kenny's done here by adding a B flat major seven arpeggio in there is he's unlocked all of the extensions and made it sound nice and sophisticated. And then to top that off, after that, he's using some extra notes some really outside notes and these notes here so he's creating a c7 sharp 5 chord and that is creating a huge amount of tension which then takes you to f so in effect what he's doing there is he's seeing c7 as the five of the next chord the dominant of the next chord so the five of the four because remember we're in the key of c and f is the four but he is treating C7 as the five of F, as we all know it is. And so he's treating it as such by making it an altered chord to make the tension and the resolve even better. Okay, let's take a look at the next two bars in Kenny's solo, bars 29 and 30, here we go. Okay, so here um, we're obviously going to a four chord and then there is a sharp four diminished chord, which is something you see quite a lot in blueses when you want to add a little bit more sophistication and a bit more harmonic movement. So F9 going to F sharp diminished and then going back to C major seven at the end of it. Um, and what Kenny's doing in these two bars here um, as he approaches the F and the F diminished is he's using chord grabs to punctuate the harmony. So at first you get a chord grab of an F9 chord there, so the, the top of an F9 chord, and then you get this here, and this here is part of a diminished seventh. So remember, diminished sevenths, there are four voicings of the same diminished seventh chord. And what this means is that you can use any of those voicings there. And so obviously Kenny's gone for one that is similar to the previous voicing of F9. So here, and then all he has to do is just change one note there. And that's some really lovely voice leading there. So. And those notes that you hear, they're all notes taken from the notes that are included in the F dominant seventh chord. So here's an example of me using these techniques over the top of these two bars. Okay, let's take a look at the next four bars.
Okay, this is where things start to get really interesting. So we see a C major 7, and then an F major 7, and then an E minor 7, and an A7, moving to a D minor 7. Um, and then after that, he adds in an uh, allusion to an E flat 9, and then a G7, which is the 5 going back to the C again. Okay, which is back to our home key. And then we're in the final two bars, the final stretch. So let's look at these four bars. What is he doing? So C major seven first, obviously, is the tonic chord. We've been used to C7 up to now. So this is quite interesting that he's doing this. Um, but in the solo, he alludes to it by... And then that those extra notes there are alluding to an F major seven. And this F major seven is basically just a passing chord. It's diatonically accurate in the key of C, but it's a passing chord taking us to the three, which is E minus seven, and he's setting up a two, five, one going to D minor. So that is E minus seven, A seven, and then D minus seven. And remember D minus seven in relation to our key is the two chord. So he's setting up a movement, a big long movement towards that C chord, okay? So he's setting up a big long movement towards that two chord so we can create a two five one so all of that c major seven f major seven e minor seven a seven sets up this two five one here d minor seven and then he kind of throws in a curveball a little bit by going up a semitone to an e flat nine but then resolves it going to the five of c and then obviously at the end it's the standard one four one five so how do we navigate over the top of this? Well, Kenny plays an awful lot of arpeggios for this, outlining the chords themselves. Um, there are a couple of altered notes in here. Um, so for example, over the top of the A7, he plays a B flat, which is a flat nine. Um, but generally he is just outlining the chords themselves. So it's worth making sure that you know the arpeggios for all of these chords. So here they are. <laughs> And then here is an example of me soloing over these four bars. So you'll notice at the very end there, over the top of the E flat and the G7, I kind of copy what Kenny's doing, which is basically to go back to the C minor again. And this is a really good idea because it creates a bit of juxtaposition and approach. So whereas before we've been very arpeggiaic, if that's a word, now we're going back to what we've been doing all along, which is using the minor pentatonic as our vocabulary. And then at the very end, let's take a look at the last two bars. Okay, so in these last two bars, more chord grabs all the way. It's chord grabs all the way. Um, so again, just make sure that you know some different voicings for the chord grabs. He's using a C7 sharp nine down here. And this we know this from Chitlins, that he uses this particular voicing, which is a rootless voicing. And it's always a good idea to use some rootless voicings because using the root gets in the way of the bass and it can clash and it can also take up a little bit too much of the stereo field in that low end there especially if you're using thick strings like 13s like I am. At the end, Kenny embellishes the 1-5 in the last bar, the C7 to G7, by playing an E flat minor 9, a D minor 9, and then a G7 sharp 5. The majority of it is just semitonal movement. And you may kind of go, oh, why has he picked an E flat minor 9? Basically, what he's trying to do is create a 2-5 to go back to the 1. And all he's done is just gone up a semitone, and purely because it sounds good. Okay, it creates this nice big tension that you're then gonna resolve by going to the back to the top of the head again. So here's an example of me doing the same thing. Okay, well done if you got through all of that. Tons and tons of info packed into such a short space. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it. As always, make sure you head over to Patreon to grab the transcription and the backing track and all of the exercise packs in there. Um, I really do encourage you to try out all of these ideas with a backing track, not just copy what Kenny does. It's always a good idea to try and make your own music with it and use his approach, but make it your own. So try that for this week. 
Next lesson will be in a couple of weeks' time. Thanks for bearing with. Good luck with your practice. Happy practicing, and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.